Uh, what is your name? Uh, Fred Frederick Vest. V E S T. And where did you or why did you join the service or were you drafted? You know, I joined when I was 17 because I figured they might get me later sooner or later. <laughs> uh, they draft me, so I just figured I'd beat the, beat the thing. I went in in August of 19, 1943. And uh, you said you were 17 then? 17, yeah. Uh, so what were you doing before you joined the service? I went to many shipyards. Worked in the shipyard? Yeah. Over, over there in Quincy? In Quincy, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what branch of the service did you join? Navy. The Navy? Yeah. Uh, how did your parents feel about you joining? Uh, well, they were a little worried, but uh, they, they went along with me. And then my brother joined uh, a little while later. He, he went in the Army, though. So, uh, so, where did you do your basic training? I went in basic boot camp down in Newport, Rhode Island. And then from there I went to Great Lakes Service School uh, as a uh, ship fitter. <laughs> and uh, that's what I was doing basically in the shipyard. I was jack and working with the ship fitters and they taught me about it. In fact, I helped build the ship by sailing. So. That's good. Uh, was there any culture shock, uh, meeting other people from different parts of the country uh, uh, during your training? Uh, they, they, they were people. Yeah. You know, they were just like me. You know, <laughs> so, there was no difference. They, had, uh, they did have cut, uh, different customs uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. It was like down in Virginia, they had the signs up in there. Dogs and sailors keep off the grass. And, uh, Black only for the men from or ladies from whatever the case may be. Yeah. That's changed now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any interesting stories from your basic training? Anything that comes to mind in particular? No, not really. It's just uh, uh, it was like I say, new experience. And, uh, get used to it. Now, like, you know. yeah. What was your uh, Specialty while you're in the, in the Navy. Shipping. Shipping, yeah. And uh, so did you see any combat? Were you in any, uh, what zones were you in? Uh, I was in the Pacific Ocean with the 3rd Fleet and the 7th Fleet. We were uh, uh, off Iwo Jima. Uh, Okinawa, we went to the Philippines, we were in the Philippines, and we went down into the South China Seas, uh, that's when the Japanese had, had that part of it. And then uh, we went from there, went to, uh, into, we, we pulled into Tokyo Bay the day after they signed the peace treaty in '45. So, uh, do you think that the Pacific Theater was any more important than the European Theater? Or no, it was important. Yeah. yeah. They had to keep the Japanese busy. Uh, we did. It. Yeah. Uh, do you have any conjured hatred against the uh, Japanese, or did you? come to hate them naturally or did you, you know, not really hate them at all? No, I didn't hate them. They were just, the, uh, the war was over and uh, they surrendered and that was it. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. And we, we were on, we went ashore for a couple of days, whatever, and we had liberty. And uh, the people were, were very friendly, you know. Uh, do you think the war in the Pacific was a racist war on either side? Do you think they were racist towards you, or do you feel other people, like other American soldiers, may have been racist towards the Japanese? No, I don't think so. Uh, so you said you saw actions in in the Philippines and Okinawa and yeah. Iwo Jima. Yeah. Okay. And uh, did you 
have any really dangerous experience while in the combat? We get, uh, we get, a, we get one plane land and they've been on a bombing mission. I was on, a, I was on board an aircraft carrier, by the way. And uh, the plane came in and landed and it jabbed the bombers. And when he opened his bomb bed, he said, hit the deck and blew up. <laughs> Uh, okay. And, and killed, and killed a few people. Uh, yeah. That was one of them. And then another time we could hit by a Japanese kamikaze and he came in. And, uh, and, uh, crashed into the uh, couple of planes and started a fire. Me and the uh, ship in the repair division there, of course, one of our jobs was fighting fires. And, uh, Grab the hose and drag the hose around there and get it going and trying to put out the flames and everything else. And I happened to glance over and a bomb had been laying on the deck and the heat from the flames caused it to burst open. It just broke in half and just flaked open like that to see all the, all the powder and everything else there and I dampened that to keep it people from exploding in that was as close as I can get. Uh, do you feel that your superior officers were trustworthy and knowledgeable and inspiring? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you ever refuse to obey an order? No. Uh, well, you didn't have any contact with any of the SS troops because you were in the Pacific. Uh, How would you sum up the effort of the Allies in World War II and uh, your own efforts? Well, well, well they were uh, well, they were uh, get together. And they, they were fighting the Japanese in the Pacific and so forth. And both the uh, foreigners that were in our fleet and whatnot, they uh, they were fighting just as hot as we were. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. It would be the same in, uh, in Europe, because they were all fighting the Nazis and whatnot. And, yeah. uh, they had the different countries uh, you know, fighting. In fact, France had the, uh, the uh, 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 saboteurs and so forth and whatnot. And, uh, they were getting as many as they could. You know, like, now you also feel you were in the Korean War also. Do you feel that was more of a forgotten war in America's history? Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close there. That was uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember if he was the one that he wanted to drop the atomic bomb into North Korea, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, north of the Yellow River. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese, they knew the Chinese were massing, and Truman says, no, no, you can't do that, and all that kind of shit. And then the next thing you know, all the Chinese zip down the river and drove us all the way back down to Busan. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, otherwise, I think we were not the crap out of Mike and the mayor, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it have saved a few thousand lives. Yeah. So that's the same reason we, you know, we dropped the atomic bomb in, in uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Yeah. The first bomb uh, did quite a bit of damage and took quite a few lives, granted. And the second one, the Japanese didn't realize exactly what it was. But then when the second bomb went off, then they realized that we had a weapon that would see a lady. And, they, and uh, that's when they surrendered. Because mm -hmm. they had to drop it on Tokyo and see a lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything would have been. But uh, like I say, it cost a few, it cost the Japanese <coughs> a few hundred thousand lives, granted. But they figured roughly it would have saved at least a million American lives mm -hmm. to invade Japan. Yeah. Because they would have fought 
you'd have been fighting everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. Now, uh, when you were in Korea, were you also in the Navy, or no, no, you were in the I Army had, at that I had, uh, I had got out for a little bit, then we went to go back in the Navy, and they said, go back in as a seaman, I could go to hell. Because <laughs> I had gone through, because I had to have going as back in as a seaman, and you get all the mess decks and all that crap, and I've already gone through that. <laughs> but I, I went in the Army, and you know, went, went through the uh, boot camp down to uh, uh, Fort Dix, and then went to school down to Fort Belvoir. Because I come out on August and send me over to Japan. And I got over to, to Japan and uh, I was stationed in uh, Camp McGill, which was uh, an officer's. Japanese officers training camp during World War II and all that. And uh, at that time, they were negotiating the uh, peace treaty and all that crap, a truce, whatever. And uh, they, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember to get, to get, to get these facts straight. Oh yeah, they said that you could not have any more men when they sign these papers, any more men that are there now, and you cannot bring any more arms or whatnot to mm -hmm. them that is already over there. So they ship out, they ship that division over to uh, yeah, Young Dung Po, which is uh, just, well, it's about, I think, uh, uh, north of Pusan, and there's an Air Force resupply depot. And uh, we were there and all that good so mm -hmm. uh, So we hear about the uh, Inchon landing in Korea. Can you tell us anything about that? Uh, well, I wasn't there. I was, on the, I was on the East Coast when that one happened. And they went up the river into Inchon and started going in through the sea and all that. But mm -hmm. that set up there. Uh, like we were, we were on the east coast on that one there, so uh, just, mm -hmm. mostly uh, just building up the manpower and so yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Was it demoralizing to know that you were facing just tons of Chinese soldiers coming no. down in from China? No. Uh, so, who do you feel... Who do you feel was uh, right, MacArthur or Truman, as far as... Uh... Basically speaking, I think MacArthur was right. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, they would have... Uh, uh, they would have pretty well wiped out that Chinese force. Mm -hmm. And it would have saved many American lives and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, no, I think you're right. When you fight a war, you fight a war to win. Mm -hmm. so. uh, did you find it cold in Korea? Uh, not where we were. It, yeah. was, uh, it was cold, but not, not like it, uh, further north. Uh, you, you get a lot of guys got frostbitten and all that, you know, so it's very uh, Like I said, it was cold, but uh, not that, uh, just regular winter time. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you just want yeah. Uh, so, at that time, what did you think you were fighting for, and do you think your efforts were worth it? Well, yeah, we were fighting the communism, okay? <laughs> and we're still fighting the communism. Right, yeah. Uh, we're fighting communism, which is, see you later. Mm -hmm. So you feel it was worth it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, in Korea, did you see any racism in the, between the troops there and the Chinese and the Koreans? Uh, not really, no. No. Hmm. Although the Koreans were, uh, you couldn't really trust them. 
they, they would steal the shirt off your back if you gave it to them. Yeah. Because they had to do that when the Japanese occupied them. And they, uh, they weren't taking care of them like they should. And they were good at the stealing everything they could get their hands on. Mm -hmm. And it would be nothing because I was on the, I was on a back gate one time. And there's a little village over here, all right? And I was looking, at, and I was looking for this fox that was meandering around through the middle. I was kind of keeping my eye uh, open, watching out for him. Right? And I saw something going across the road, dip road. Now, this is at night, so it stopped. I just see it like a shadow going across. I said, what the heck, you know? And then, uh, I went up there and I told I called the main gate and told him, keep around the back gate, I gotta go check something. I went up on the hill, looking over in this half the damn village and they were stealing lumber <laughs> from the wow. from the bridge. Yeah. And there was nothing for them. Like uh, they had the Koreans working for them, they were doing laundry and whatnot and all this you know, different things. And one day they can buy and they had these, they had these big packages and they load them on their head. That's where they carry them. You know, and I, what the hell was going on? And then I grabbed one woman. I told her, I says, what's this here? What are you doing? You know, what are you got? And you know, she dumped it down. It was all wood. <laughs> you know, I said, what the hell is going on? And then I found out this other woman can buy with a, a sewing machine. Yeah. No, there are no property passing anything, so I grabbed that and I said, hey, you stupid. I had to get that. I put that in the bathhouse. And then uh, I got up all of the uh, sides of the control and I said, I got this woman come by with a sewing machine. I said, I don't know whether it's yours or she's stealing it or what the hell is. She had no property pass, so I confiscated it. And I'll, I'll take it up to the uh, office when I get uh, And I get up to the office and this uh, this jet, uh, Korean MP started chewing me up. Why you take sewing machine? He said she had no property cards. And she knows she don't need a property card. I will pack you, you know. I says, you need a property pass. I don't know whether she was stealing it or what the hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then he cried it down. You know, he did, they they found out that it did belong to her, so they did it to her. So, yeah. It was just, they, they weren't, uh, you just had to be careful. Like that, yeah. So. so how many years did you serve over there in Korea? Uh, six months. Six months? Yeah. Well, do you have any questions for me? Well, I gotta okay. pull out. What were the, the total years of service? You said you started in 1943. Yeah. And what what year did you finally end up after the Korean War and everything else? Did you I end up? I retired with 22 years in. Oh, oh. so that's now what 1962, 1965. Uh, I, had, I had a break in the service now because. Uh, I went in the Naval Reserve after I got out. I was in the Naval Reserve, and then the wife and I got in a big argument or whatever, so I went to go back in the Navy, and that's when they said to come back into the scene, and I go to hell, and I went in, so I went to the Army and see what they had, so mm -hmm. I took the thing off at me and went in, and then I retired, I was uh, 16. Uh, I don't even know when I retired, but I had 22 years on 60, 65. It was right around that area. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, because I got married in, uh, again in 65. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, did you grow up in this area? Pardon? Did you grow up in this area? No. No? Where did I you grow up? I grew up in the main Quincy Green. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much yeah. again. You're a big help. We really, we really appreciate it. Yeah.